Fox 35 News at 10 starts now. Right now on Fox 35 News, college graduations against the backdrop of nationwide protests. Pro-Palestinian demonstrators briefly disrupted a ceremony at the University of Michigan. Protesters held flags while calling for the university to cut ties with Israel. Universities have struggled with how to respond as they balance free speech with campus security. Good evening and thanks so much for joining us on Fox 45 News at 10. I'm Randy Hildreth. Now here in Florida, state officials are directing public universities to do everything they can to make sure ceremonies aren't disrupted. At UCF, there were ceremonies this morning and the last one at 630 this evening. Fox 35 Stephanie Bavanti was on campus today where protesters showed up. The protests. And as the campus protests continue, a possible ceasefire deal between Israel and Hamas could be in the works. Israeli officials are giving Hamas one week to agree to a ceasefire or they're threatening to invade another city. Hamas's top leader has not responded to the proposal. The Secretary of State says a ceasefire needs to happen soon, and he says it all comes down to Hamas. The Secretary of State also says a deal could lead to normalizing relations with Arab neighbors like Saudi Arabia. New tonight, a new memorial to honor the victims of the Pulse nightclub shooting is being built in Osceola County. The memorial is going in the Neo City community. Groundbreaking is set for June 12th, marking eight years since the shooting. A design for the memorial has not been released, but officials say it will be 49 feet high, honoring the 49 killed. Developing out of Wildwood tonight, a DCF employee has been arrested, accused of abusing an 11 year old child. Cordell Boss Samuels is accused of grabbing an 11 year old and throwing her on a couch at one of the DCF centers. Police say the girl was hurt. Boss Samuels was arrested and has been released on a $2,000 bond. DCF has not responded to our request for comment. Turning now to a live look at downtown Orlando this Saturday night. You see the folks out there mixing and mingling. And listen, things are heating up across Central Florida. We've been uh, tracking the possibility of some record setting temps next week. Fox 35 Storm Team meteorologist Brooks Garner joins us now. And Brooks, things are getting, I saw it on your, your graphic, hot, yes. hot, hot. That's right. The three <laughs> hots just happened coming up in your full forecast. But Randy, I'll toss it back to you. Looking ahead to all that heat next week. Oh, I'm looking forward to it, kind of. All right, transitioning to this story, developing now, one of the victims hurt in that mass shooting at a Seminole County nightclub, she's filing a lawsuit. She claims the venue and the promoter failed to provide adequate security. A 16-year-old was arrested for shooting at a crowd during a private party at the Cabana Live last weekend. Rakita Davis says the bullet went through her left ankle. She spent three days in the hospital. Doctors told her, it could take at least three months for her to recover. Now, despite having 10 armed security guards, deputies say the 16 year old was still able to get that gun inside. Now, a security guard is being credited with tackling that team to stop him, but Davis and her attorney say that is not enough. Unfortunately, if they had better security, no one would have got in with a firearm. In response to the lawsuit, an attorney representing Cabana Live sent Fox 35 this statement, saying in part, quote, qualified and experienced security personnel were present last Saturday night. Cabana Live was operating in accordance with applicable standards and requirements. Investigators believe a second person also fired at least five rounds, possibly in self-defense. That person has not been identified yet. A Fox 35 update now. It's been five days since a 17 year old in Sanford was shot in the head during a drive by. The victim's family says Layla Bennett is getting better, but she has a long road ahead. According to a post from her family on GoFundMe, she is responding to voices and has movement on her left side. Layla will have to have surgery next week to remove that bullet. Now, this shooting happened Monday night on Scott Drive. Another team was grazed by a bullet. Sanford police are still searching for the suspect. They were spotted driving a red SUV. If you saw anything or know anything, you are asked to contact Crime Line. Out of Daytona Beach tonight, one woman is dead after being thrown off of a motorcycle in a crash Friday night. FHP says it happened on LPGA Boulevard near Derbyshire Road around 550 yesterday. The woman was headed east and the man was driving on the opposite side, tried to make a left turn and that's where they collided head on. The woman died at the scene and the other driver is expected to be okay. FHP says it is investigating. 
Let's take a look at your screen. This man is accused of shoving his 91 year old grandfather to the ground in Palm Coast. Investigators say he recorded the whole thing on his own cell phone. I do want to warn you, this video may be hard to watch. Ten year old Brandon Valentine was the caretaker for his grandfather. The victim's daughter saw this video and called deputies. Valentine is charged with abuse of an elderly person and is being held on a $10,000 bond. An Orange County man has filed a lawsuit against several pharmacies and pharmacists. He claims the Adderall prescribed caused an overdose and sent him into psychosis and caused seizures. The lawsuit names pharmacies at Publix, CVS and Costco, and we've reached out to each company for comment but have not heard back yet. A news alert out of Mexico. Three bodies were found during a search for an American tourist and his two Australian friends. They went missing last weekend. The surfers were on a camping trip in Baja, California, when they mysteriously disappeared. Mexican officials are waiting on DNA results, but say there's a good chance the bodies are of those missing surfers. Now, during the search, their families identified them as Jack Carter Road from San Diego and Jack and Callum Robinson from Australia. Mexican officials say the pickup truck belonging to the American was found burned near a remote area along the coast. Two men and a woman have been arrested on suspicion of kidnapping. The lead prosecutor in that area believes the three suspects tried to steal their vehicle. When the men resisted, one of the suspects shot them and they believe tried to dispose of their bodies. People in Houston are dealing with this severe flooding and it's only going to get worse before it gets better. More storms are in the forecast for this evening, bringing another one to three inches of water to, as you can see, a already soaked region. Friday storms caused massive flooding and led to hundreds of rescues. Officials have told people in low lying areas to get out quickly. Now Fox 35 News is just getting started. Still ahead, a thrilling photo finish at the Kentucky Derby. At the Kentucky Derby. Got that confused there. We'll show you the dramatic finish and let you know how some of the local horses fared. Plus, the countdown is on for the launch of Boeing Starliner, carrying two astronauts for the first time to the International Space Station. A look ahead at that mission coming up. And this video making a lot of people mad online. Boaters seen throwing two bags of trash into the ocean. The consequences those guys may face for their actions. That story after the break.